Leather. Whips. Chains. Hatari Hani. Iceland is bringing some BDSM magic and we've got to talk about it. Are you ready? Let's, Let's do, do this. this. Break the chains of ignorance and learn about your past with my heritage. In any case, Iceland is serving something so original. It is dark and yet it is light. It is dirty and yet it is somehow very, very clean and uplifting and somehow spiritual. There are a lot of contrasts going on. <laughs> The song is called Hatred Will Prevail. These singers obviously don't want hatred to prevail, and they're essentially calling on all of you to spread love before this dystopian vision takes hold. In their song, they sing of fake news, fake leaders, problems all over the place, and yet you have that angelic voice from Clemens. It comes in, it pulls you up up from the darkness that Matthias has created. This is very clever. Some people will get lost in all the darkness. They'll be like, ooh, they worship the devil. But it's exactly <laughs> the opposite. They are bringing the light. This is the most surprising track of 2019. I'm sorry, hands down. This is so out there, bizarre, and weird. And it comes with a strong visual identity. Yes, people will read sexuality in this. People will read something perhaps a little dark room about it. It. But if you just listen to the music, you'll see that there is so much more here, and I really hope and indeed expect that Europe will latch onto it. And they will. I mean, Hatari make Lordy look pedestrian, <laughs> and that is really saying something. Clearly, BDSM sex is the visual driver here, there is no doubt. But you know what, whether you like that or you despise it, you are hooked from start to finish. Yeah. And I just love the duplicity. Actually, no, it's, it's duality of, of these two images because it's so extreme and yet so complementary. You know, where you have the angels, you have the devil, where you have, you know, leather, you have lace, and, you know, you have this sort of gender bending kind of world with a really uber masculine um, sort of main driver. I think this is really great. But of course, underscoring all these moments of orgasm are real serious issues, you know, from social political concerns to economic concerns. They even have a point of view about performing in Israel, you know, throw anything at Hatari, huh. they have their own point of view and they have a story. There's a, there's a narrative driving this. On one hand, they look quite gimmicky, but when you peel that back, there's actually a lot here. I would, I would actually go as far as saying this is Iceland's most daring entry yet. They've really raised the bar. We're not talking anymore about qualification because that's a given. This is about how well this will do for for Iceland and potentially actually Reykjavik could host the contest next year. Um, I think it's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I think the best thing about it is that my personal favourite thing is watching people who don't get that they're completely in on it uh, and that they're always like, oh, you know, they said this, oh, anti-capitalism, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's just, you know, they have a fake soda stream company that is sponsoring them and, and you know, they're anti-capitalism, but we have to fund ourselves with capitalism. They completely get it. They're 100% in on the joke. But I think that completely, apart from all of that, musically, I really enjoyed this too. At the end of the day, I think it's a really great song. It gets in your head. You know, you're never going to be able to properly sing along with it because it's in Icelandic and because I don't want to ruin my voice shouting that much, but... You know, I think that everything about this is very well constructed and ultimately I want to see them do well at Eurovision. My, my big fear for them is I'm slightly worried that they'll dehydrate in all that latex in the heat of Tel Aviv. Like, get those boys some water, they're going to need it. Um. 
What I love about when Matthias is singing is that, yes, he's screaming, but there's also a musical quality to it. We mm. saw it last year with the AWS. There is a way to do that kind of heavy metal mm. shriek that is somehow musical, and he is able to do that. Clemens, that light, ethereal voice, the voice of an angel, really, a leather-clad angel. I've got to say, when I was interviewing them, I almost got slightly flustered because... <laughs> Even if you're not into a leather aesthetic, a BDSM aesthetic, there's something very attractive about them. And if you are into it... Then you're into then it. Then you are into yeah. it, babe. I mean, they're going to be very, very popular at Euro Club, <laughs> any club. Um, and I think in very specific clubs, they will be very popular. <laughs> in any case, let's go around and give our scores, along with a prediction and a justification, starting with Chris. I am giving this an 8.5. I think it is easily one of Iceland's best songs in a long time. We've often accused Iceland of playing it safe recently. They are 100% not doing that at all. Um, I think that it will make the final. I think that it could do very well. They're already getting the press. These are Hatatari are going to be the act that everybody talks about in the build-up to it. You're going to have the favourite, which is more than likely going to be the Netherlands, and then it's the who else will stand out, and that is Hatari. I think that they are... Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward, and I think that their stage show in Tel Aviv is going to be even grander and... Who knows, filthier BDSM, -er, who knows what they're going to do, but I can't wait to see it. Nothing sounds like this, nothing looks like this, nothing has this texture, nothing else has this message. This stands out on every front. It is going to the final. People will vote for this, some simply because it's like Lordy and a bit mm. freakish, others because they're so touched by it, others because they understand the musical quality. Musical experts will understand this. Remember, this nearly swept the jury in Iceland. Yeah. People respect it. My score was given before I heard them live in Amsterdam. If I could do my score again, I would elevate my score, but I am locked in by our accounting firm, Ernst & Young. On April the 1st, when we handed yeah. our scores in. And my score at that time was an eight, but they slayed me live in Amsterdam. I would take this up to a 9.5 or a 10, but sadly I can't. Post-industrial punk rock, you know, that's not a genre we hear often at Eurovision and what makes this even more compelling is that it has real pop undertones because there's a melody drawing from that. In addition to that, it's in Icelandic, again, not a language that frequents the world of Eurovision. So for those points alone, I'm awarding them top benchmarks. On top of that, so what's your score? The, uh, well, it's a 10, but I'm now justifying my scoring. <laughs> On top of that, visually, this is just like nothing I've seen before, you know? So it even nods to the polyamory, the pansexuality, and also the leather community, which is, you know, they are um, a fading bunch, you a know? A big voting block as well. A big <laughs> voting block. And, you know, they are becoming relatively extinct you know and this is not a particularly youthful community and then you have clemens doing his gender bending thing kind of opening it up beyond the letter daddy's tom of finland i can't praise this act any more than i already have this is the 10 out of 10 in all fronts in all categories musically visually sexually all I know is this, Maria Olaf's is locked in her Disney castle, <laughs> but even from the towering heights of Rapunzel's boudoir, she's gonna be watching Hatari and she may just light a match and start smoking, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This affects everyone. You it's can't heavier. hide through paper on this yeah. one. Okay. It's heavier than paper. Yes, yes. It's our choice and our choice is to give <laughs> Hatari love. In any case, that We is... are not the only oh, no, no, bloggers no. on the panel. Oh my god, I always forget this part. Uh -huh. I'm gonna pull up the, there are wee wee bloggers even in Iceland yeah. two of them two girls Iceland. we have two girls women in okay we have their global uh, their scores from all over the world we've done a global average and that average is 7.46 that's no. really good but that's, but that's good, good for the jury and this is divisive you know people do not necessarily just like Qatari so 
I think that this is really, really good as a score, actually. I mean, it's 7.5. So yeah, I'm and very few songs get a 7.5 on average across 50 people yeah. around the world. I mean, that's insanity, especially yeah. for a divisive entry, as you rightly mm -hmm. point out. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? What is your score for Hatari? Where do you put them in your top 41? Do you think this is too divisive to win Eurovision? Or do you think it's sufficiently out there and wacky that it might actually surprise and win Eurovision? Let us know here on WeWe Vlogs. Yes, and follow us on multiple social media platforms including Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Rubber, leather, whips, chains, Fifty oh. Shades of Grey, something a bit more hardcore. Let us know all your preferences about the song. Um, and in the comment section below, hit the like button, subscribe, notification bell, social media, everything. Description box, honey. <laughs> whatever, whatever you wear, please make sure it breathes. We'll yeah. see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.